Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Kramer, for your excellent advisement and, and editing of my paper throughout this co-op. I could not have reached this level of academic research without your help. Greetings, panelists. Tonight, we have Dr. Loomis, faculty advisor. Thank you, Dr. Loomis, for being here and for your expert advice on the ePortfolio throughout this co-op project. Thank you, Dr. Wanamaker, for agreeing to participate as a panelist this evening. I look forward to your comments and questions. And thank you, Kiana, for accepting my last minute invitation. Kiana was my research partner. She worked closely with me creating the survey questions and organizing the Survey Monkey survey and the announcement with Dr. Loomis. Let us begin. Um, the contents for tonight's presentation are the introduction, problem statement, research questions, findings, conclusions, recommendations, and experience gains. Introduction. My name is Christine Jacqueline McMahon, and I'm a Relief Shift Supervisor, Residential Manager at NHS Human Services, Allegheny Valley School, part of the NHS Human Services family of companies, which are a community-based nonprofit human services provider serving the special needs of adults. They're the largest provider in the Northeast. I advise the regional director and supervise the 123-bed residential facility for intellectually disabled adults, scheduling and, and supervision of over 100 support staff and collaborating with medical, environmental, social services, psychology, recreation, transportation, fiscal, and dietary services. I also facilitate mandated trainings, oversee unit chart documentation, coordinating activities with the residential team and families, advocating for community and governmental services. I also have prior work experience over 10 years combined in residential services with addiction services, uh, vocational, educational, and prison environments, and I have over three years counseling experience and over five years supervisory experience yeah. and in educational curriculum development experience with diverse populations from preschool to pre-K, adolescents, adults, and senior citizens. I'm also an experienced international presenter. I've presented papers in Beijing, China, and also in Bill Cabamba, Ecuador, and in Bradenton, Florida, I'm also a radio show host. Okay. Let me start by introducing you to the research. The MSHE program desires to integrate ePortfolio into the EDHE 500 Foundations of Higher Education curriculum introducing students to the ePortfolio process at the start of the MSHE program. The purpose is to expose graduate students to the career development characteristics of the ePortfolio implementation, furthering students' understanding of linkages between academic and career development. This traditional sponsored co-op project was created to evaluate best practices of the ePortfolio process used in graduate student assessment of online, face-to-face, and hybrid institutional programming. And tools used at Drexel and other institutions as found through the literature. The problem statement. The career development curriculum and student learning assessment application of the MSHE program is limited and needs to be expanded so students can create reflective e-portfolios connecting their academic experience with their professional goals. Students do not have enough time to connect assignments with career planning, partly because they are not introduced to the ePortfolio until midway through the MSHE program. Career development tools like ePortfolio should be introduced at the beginning of the MSHE program so students have more time to reflect on academic and career goals throughout matriculation. If Drexel University Online does not introduce the ePortfolio process earlier in the MSHE program, and this is an opportunity to integrate students into the assessment process sooner in the online graduate program when students could be creating connections to and furthering their academic and professional potential. In addition to career development, processes and performance metrics need to be re-examined in light of the literature 
with other institutional best practices in traditional asynchronistic and blended graduate pedagogy, identifying trends in student learning outcomes of self and collaborative assessment. The research questions. There were seven research questions. The three were used mainly to organize the data into themes, the first of which was the most instrumental and directed the research project. Question number one asked about benefits students would receive by implementing ePortfolio throughout the MSHE curriculum. Question number six asked students what they found useful about ePortfolio to enhance their career development. And question number seven asked managers specifically their perceptions on embedding ePortfolio throughout matriculation of the MSHE program. The remaining questions looked to find trends in ePortfolio tools in mixed mod modality classroom settings, look for benchmarks through the literature and in-depth interviews with managers, and ePortfolio effects on graduate education as professional development tools were implemented earlier. The findings. This research utilized a mixed method approach during the spring 2012 quarter. 30 quantitative questions were posted on the SurveyMonkey portal. 80 students were invited to participate with an email sent through the admissions office of the director of the MSHE program, which included 25 Likert scale, four demographic, and one open-ended question, inviting students to participate in a follow-up interview. To clarify their perceptions on ePortfolio, iWorkfolio School. 35 students responded over the course of one week, providing a response rate of 43.75%. Nine of the students who responded to the survey requested to participate in a follow-up interview and provided their contact information. Due to IRB constraints, the follow-up interview with students was not completed by this researcher. Concurrent with the survey, qualitative in-depth interviews were conducted with managers, and five managers were invited via email to participate. Four responded two requested a telephone interview, and two responded independently to the interview questions, providing the following data. Of the students surveyed, 17.1% strongly agreed and 37.1% somewhat agreed that using the ePortfolio enhanced graduate online experience by providing a comprehensive examination of reflective academic coursework with professional goals. Of the students surveyed, 34.3% somewhat disagreed and 14.3% strongly disagreed that the iWebfolio tool was more user-friendly and were unfamiliar with other online ePortfolio tools such as Google Site, Linux, Web Tools, web tools WIX.com, WordPress, and Folio Spaces. Over 68% of students surveyed agreed developing ePortfolio increased understanding of their academic and professional strengths and weaknesses, and 40% of students surveyed agreed the ePortfolio process improved communication and writing skills. Of the managers interviewed, three out of four managers felt that the iWebfolio ePortfolio tool was limited, static, more like a Dropbox than a creative reflective archive, difficult to navigate, and not meeting its potential. Managers also said students aren't collaborating and sharing their ePortfolios beyond instruction. Three out of four managers agreed the MSHE program is not utilizing the student outcomes assessment capabilities. And managers are concerned about accessibility, especially with hearing and vision impaired students. The data that reflects the problem statement shows that 80% of the students surveyed and all four managers interviewed agreed that starting the career development module in the beginning of the MSHE curriculum would help create a more professional ePortfolio, improve learning outcomes, improve ref the reflective process, provide time to collaborate and share with internal and external audiences. The conclusion. The finding shows that of the students surveyed, 61.7% agreed exceptional examples were provided to facilitate ePortfolio construction. 62.9% of the students surveyed reviewed the tutorial before creating their ePortfolio, 
and over 74% of the students surveyed agreed instructors were very knowledgeable when counseling them on their e-portfolios. Over 48% of students surveyed and three out of four managers interviewed agreed iWebfolio was not user-friendly, difficult to navigate, and accessibility was limited. And the same student cohort were unfamiliar with ePortfolio tools, and managers agreed students either were technology savvy or challenged. And it appeared that since student learning assessment was lacking through the iWebfolio ePortfolio tool, it could be possible Instructors were not familiar with the iWebfolio tool or that different rubrics were needed to evaluate student learning outcomes. Recommendation. It is the recommendation of this, recommendations of this researcher that the MSHE curriculum designers consider the following enhancements to the ePortfolio. Number one. Consider implementing the EDHE 606 Higher Education Career Development course at the beginning of the curriculum alongside the EDHE 500 Foundation in Higher Education course. Um, that would also include moving the EDHE, um, when you move the EDHE 606, to put in its place the ORGB 631 Leading Effective Organizations with professional development modules embedded in the curriculum. So reverse the, the order um, instead of having the EDHE 606 at the middle, uh, put that at the beginning with the EDHE 500, <laughs> excuse me, foundation in higher education. <coughs> excuse me. And in the middle, put the ORGB, I think it's 631. Number two, consider embedding the ePortfolio process throughout the MSHE curriculum with students creating a self-reflective field of study essay within each quarter upon each course completion. Number three, consider collaborating with IT administrators and IT students and students within the program to design better mod, mod, models for creative, reflective ePortfolio tools, such as Google, Site, Linux, web tools, WordPress, et cetera, and encourage students to create them independently on different platforms. Instructors could encourage this by providing open spaces and time to incorporate the reflective process of ePortfolio construction. Number four, consider expanding the current paradigm of career counseling by restructuring the current model to incorporate Drexel's career resource portal and collaborate directly with an e-assessment counselor who implements the MSHE portfolio, e-portfolio process. This would involve not just resume development, but career advancement with job search strategies and networking from community-based to international applications that begin with the prospective student and would extend to alumni. This is the most practical approach for an e-assessment counselor to begin collaborating with the student prior to their admission and to be available beyond the graduate experience. Possibly, uh, number five, um, consider developing the e-portfolio rubric that combines leadership and professional skills and coursework as stated within the MSHE program outcome, Drexel Student Learning Priorities with a consistent long-term e-assessment counselor who would collaborate with students throughout matriculation of the MSHE program. Career advisement through an e-assessment counselor would develop rubrics, conduct formative and summative assessments, scaffold existing career development resources with internal and external collaborators. And that concludes the research portion of my presentation. Now I'd like to speak about my experience gained uh, on the professional growth through the co-op experience. Um, I believe my academic writing skills have greatly improved through the paper. Um, I also improved um, my intrapersonal and interpersonal skills through collaboration and consensus building through conferences with collaborators. The overall co-op experience was uh, beneficial uh, throughout uh, my personal experiences 
and uh, and professional and academic. Um, I believe I gained a lot um, just through going through the process of the co-op, the IRB experience, um, mostly working with the collaborators who helped on my project, which uh, were Dr. Loomis and Kiana, who were very instrumental in developing this uh, project. Um, also, Nicole Gay was the person who developed this co-op project originally uh, and uh, got approval for me to participate. Um, so the whole process of uh, from start to finish um, was, was exciting. And I'm very grateful to the people who participated. Um, thank you very much. Um, attainment through the MSHE program. Professionally, um, it built team leadership through the group projects and uh, independent research and assignments uh, built administrative and management skills, particularly in strategic planning, environmental assessment, financial audits, and um, academically, um, I learned online expertise, especially PowerPoint development, uh, documentation, archiving. Um, these were things that were foreign to me um, upon beginning the MSHE program, so I think my Achievement level has increased greatly. Um, MS, MS Office Suite, I improved my writing and comprehension increased. Um, it helped to connect academic and professional skills through career development. My resume has greatly improved as a result of uh, the career development aspect of the MSHE program. Um, understanding how my skills uh, directly relate to employment uh, within higher education, I have 10 years experience in residential. Um, that applies um, into uh, student development and fairs um, quite nicely. Um, I have uh, prior experience uh, with educational development and implementation that was non-academic, but um, still the same. I created um, uh, presentations and assignments through uh, case management and drug and alcohol. And, uh, and different uh, presentations, uh, working as a cook manager uh, for uh, dietary uh, presentations on um, safe uh, cooking techniques and also 12 steps and drug and alcohol counseling uh, uh, presentations and um, case management uh, work that I worked with with individuals while a counselor. And personally, I achieved the goal of completed MSHE program, which increased my confidence and will encourage me to pursue higher goals like uh, a PhD, uh, possibly in psychology. Um, I think that would probably um, be more instrumental in some of the things that I'm involved with on a personal level. Um, and I think that um, the doctorate degree would also enhance my uh, ability to uh, teach at the post-secondary level. Okay. Um, I also uh, wanted to add as far as uh, career goals, I have that online radio show, and I have produced several interesting interviews with individuals on various fields, and I would like to make this a career goal to develop a membership website for alternative media and online TV programming. I've been dabbling in that uh, for the last five years, and um, it's really a labor of love and something I really enjoy. And I think going through the MSHE program and learning all of the tools uh, for online uh, work and uh, development, that it, it's actually helped me to, to see within my own perspective how I can not only translate my employment skills to higher education, but also how I can utilize what I've learned through the MSHE program to maybe move in a different direction, which is, is something that uh, I would really be either interested in doing concurrently with working in higher education or maybe eventually making it my sole career. So with that, um, I'd like to say thank you all for your participation 
and I look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you. Christine, thank you for your outstanding Dr. Kramer, I'm not sure if you can hear us, but we're having difficulty hearing you. It looks like she's not even actually on line. Her her lights are not lit. Am I coming over at all? Yes, now. Hello? Oh, okay. Uh, hi. Okay, basically, then. Dr. Kramer, can you call in to the to the to this process? Maybe if you call in, then maybe that would be better. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello, hello. Perfectly. Uh, I think I know what happened, everybody. <laughs> you know, we're, I'm in South Florida, and we've got storms. This is summertime, and so we have storms, and my dog is absolutely going. Um, she needs she needs a psychiatrist, understandably so. So I moved into a very quiet, um, secluded room. And I guess my internet connection is less than desirable. That's probably what happened. So I apologize. It was either that or her barking in the background. So I knew I had to take action. <laughs> That's what I call plan B. Um, anyhow, what I was trying to say, um, Christine, is that I really believe that career development has to begin in, at the admissions phase and that the true value of anybody's educational journey, especially career um, you know, the, the type of careers that um, our knowledge-based economy really needs. To me, this is, um, have, it's directly related to student engagement. It's directly related to the value that students get from their um, program. From, it's more than the piece of paper at the end of the road. It's really tying every bit of, of the education and every course into what it really means. How is this a skill that you're going to use in real in your work? your real world. So these are um, these are important topics and concepts that you created here. What I would ask you is do you think it is a retention um, do you think that this is a positive retention move that this will impact retention positively um, in terms of introducing the e-portfolio process right from the start? 
I, I'm, I'm not at all uh, aware of the retention numbers of the MSHC program, or, but I do believe that it would absolutely increase retention of the, of the e-portfolio process. I think if people are engaged at the beginning of this of the MSHC program and in the beginning of the curriculum, then by the time they're midway through, they should be expert. And then by the end of the process, that they they would be a lot more confident and not not just stepping out of the MSHE program at the at the conclusion and saying, oh oh yeah, now I kind of understand that. Um, I, I'm saying I understood the uh, connections probably within the process of the co-op. Um, when I was going through the process and midway through the program, I didn't have as much comprehension of the connection. In fact, some of the um, the instruments that we used in the uh, career development course, uh, you know, eluded me cognitively. I, I I didn't understand how they connected to anything, and I guess there was just so abundance of so much information that it was difficult for me to process. And and now going through this whole process and concluding, then I can say with assurance that yes, I understand. I can see. I can tell you specifically how these connections are. So, yeah, I would think uh, retention in understanding the process, uh, I couldn't answer for the MSHE program as a whole. Mm -hmm. Well, I think Dr. Loomis probably could, and uh, looking over time, um, it certainly can't hurt. It certainly can't hurt. And adding a tool, a technological tool and a process after students have gone through, you know, more of the same type of coursework at the very end um, I, I just think, you know, they're not getting the biggest bang for the buck. Um, so that's, that's another reason to use it up front. Well, we've been through numerous um, iterations and numerous questions back and forth, and, um, you know, having a co-op with me is not an easy task <laughs> because um, I do question, you know, every sentence just about. So I commend you for that. It's been a little bit unusual, our journey, you know, with the late launch of the study. So. Um, with all said and done, I'm, I'm just pretty proud that uh, this ended up coming together as it did. Um, at, you know, re regardless of when it happened, it's, I'm glad that it's at this point with you and that you've made this valuable contribution to um, the department. So without further ado, I mean, I would ask you some more questions, but I know we've got several panelists here. I want to make sure everyone has, has a chance. So if we have time at the end, I'll ask them again. Um, Dr. Loomis, would you like to uh, take over and ask some questions or make some comments? Sure. <clears throat> Thanks so much, Dr. Kramer. Um, yeah, first of all, I would echo your comments. This is a wonderful study and a great contribution uh, to our program. And um, I, thought, I thought your question was right on target with respect to retention, because I think, uh, of course, we don't have data to support this, but my sense is that the more students are engaged with what they're learning and with each other, and with the program and reflecting on that from the very beginning of the program to the very end, that can only help retention. And um, and I thought, uh, Christine, your uh, recommendation to move the career development course to the beginning of the curriculum is really spot on because I think you can do a lot of assessment work there at the very beginning and then build on that uh, and then build your e-portfolio also through the coursework and through your reflection. So that's a great, great recommendation. So I just wanted to ask you, you alluded to, to this a little bit in your presentation, but um, you were really using a, a technique of participant observation as well. I think you stuck pretty much to a neutral research perspective and analyzing all the data from the other students, but you were going through this yourself. And, uh, and I thought your reflections in your presentation were wonderful, but if you could just share a little bit of your personal perspective on the e-portfolio, how you used it, and then uh, how you completed it, even within the co-op, and how uh, helpful that was or wasn't, or could have been more helpful uh, in terms of your final reflections and uh, future career plans. So just a little bit of kind of personal uh reflection on your experience with the e-portfolio. Thank you, Dr. Loomis. That's a great question, and thank you for your comments. Um, I'm going to lock this. Hold on. Uh, 
Um, first of all, my uh, experience with the ePortfolio started um, with the zip folder. Um, we had to put all our accoutrements into the zip folder, and just learning how to do that was a challenge. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of laughing to myself because I'm thinking, like, how these uh, individuals who answered the survey said that it was challenging to use the iWeb folio. Um, to me, the iWeb folio was a little bit easier, but the, the zip drive, <laughs> when I first started, uh, all these technical uh, advances that we have and, and are fortunate to be using were just foreign to me, and it was just uh, all the time I was constantly asking questions. So I, I think I spent most of my focus on trying to get the process complete and didn't really focus on what I was actually doing. So I'm, I, can, I think I can say that in retrospect, that that was probably the problem. I was focusing on, as they said, the check boxes, completing the goals and not actually uh, working on uh, finding the connection, uh, making the reflection, and doing the collaboration. So I missed out on all that part. Now, with that said, coming into the conclusion of the co-op, the EDHE 716, um, I went right to the portal. You know, uh, you know, I had a lot of trouble getting into the portal. Once I got in, I learned uh, pretty much how to use it. I thought it was pretty self-explanatory. One thing that was absolutely important, and, uh, and I, I hope that they make this recommendation when they do the rubrics, that students uh, put their documents into PDF form. Um, I saved them as a, just a document, and then... Um, I found that it was easier with the PDF form to to, to use a URL, and on each uh, subsequent uh, section, I could provide that link so you could go to the bottom of the page and you could link on that particular document. Um, the, the biggest trouble I had was I included a, um, a video from uh, my YouTube channel, and uh, that wasn't too complicated, but I, I found the procedure, um, I reloaded it and, and put that in, and then the, the PPT, present, PPT presentation, I had some trouble with that, but other than that, it, I think the, uh, the Iowa Folio process was a lot simpler for me, and I think going through the whole uh, co-op project on the ePortfolio really helped me to understand the process of what I was trying to accomplish, and I think that really enhanced my ability to find the connections and to improve my resume and to have the confidence to apply for a, an assistant provost or a, an assistant uh, director of academic affairs position. So um, I, I'm really grateful to this whole process. It's really been a wonderful experience. And thank you very much for that question. Very good. Thank you for your response. It's very complete. Uh, and one just follow, uh, final follow-up on the e-assessment counselor. What qualifications would you see? What what type of person could do that job effectively? And what what type of um, support would that person provide to students? You know, what's the need? Help me uh, understand that better. I think uh, a person an e-assessment. A counselor would be someone who has a prior assessment experience, possibly someone who has gone through the MSHE program or has utilized the ePortfolio process and, and different tools, such as the iWebfolio. Um, thank you, Kiana. Bye-bye. And um, also, uh, what would be instrumental would be someone who probably has had prior work in, uh, in curriculum building. Uh, as someone who has had uh, uh, experience working with rubrics, um, someone who has uh, excellent collaborative skills, um, possibly someone who has had prior work in higher education, maybe not necessarily in higher education, but um, as someone who's, who understands and has experience in the process that you're trying to create with working with students as they begin the program, possibly upon admission, uh, doing assessment uh, of their career goals and working with them throughout um, towards uh, their exiting the program and as alumni, providing, a, you know, an alternative uh, career development source. So I, I hope that 
answers your questions. Yes, very, very good for you. Well, again, thank you so much, Christine, for this wonderful report. And uh, I, I think it'll make a, a major contribution as we rethink the curriculum and how we use the e-portfolio uh, as part of the degree. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Loomis, for the question and your comments. Thank you very much. Okay, Dr. Wanamaker. Thank you. Um, Christine, first of all, wonderful, wonderful research topic. Um, and, I, and I say that because as an instructor in the program who has taught students in the 500 course and then students who have progressed through the program, um, I really find this t your topic to be interesting and uh, the conclusions that, that you were able to come up with, um, I tend to agree with and, and I can say that I, I have seen some of those firsthand. And Dr. Loomis, you took my question um, about, <laughs> about Christine's personal reflection, so I guess I'll think of it a, a little bit differently. Um, in some of your numbers, in your research numbers, your stat numbers, you said that it was like over half of the students said it was the first time um, that they had used something like the ePortfolio program, and then 65% oh, uh, were pleased with it, yet 40% didn't think that the ePortfolio um, enhanced their problem solving or decision making skills. So I wanted you to talk a little bit about your reflections uh, of uh, problem solving and decision making skills and if you agree with that or if your personal feelings uh, and what your personal experience is was different than that. Yes, thank you, Dr. Wanamaker. That's a great um, insight looking into that. Um, I think I, I pretty much said that with my own experience that um, the, the comprehension just uh, this wasn't there through the first time around. Um, I was more or less focused on the, the check boxes, uh, trying to complete the assignment. Um, I, I, I don't think I produced, and my score actually reflected that I didn't produce um, what the instructors were trying to, um, to get us to develop. So I, I think my own experience, if you look at my grades, you can see that I, I did not accomplish the goal as well as the instructors had um, expected that I would have. Um, I didn't uh, make the clear connections. I, I didn't do any of that. So as far as the research is concerned, I too was surprised that the students didn't, uh, didn't find that it made that, but I think that that corresponds with my own experience that um, having it at the, it's basically at the end. The second half is, is you're you're on the downhill hill slope, and and you're really you know just trying to keep your focus on what you're doing. If you have that process, the e-portfolio process, whatever tool they decide to use, whether it be iWorkfolio, I don't think it's a bad tool. That um, the students get engaged at the beginning, and they understand the process, and they understand how to use it. Then they'll absolutely in in the one year prior to the midway point. Still have all that time to develop uh, artifacts, to create documents, and to make those connections that I don't think I think was expressed through the, the research that they weren't able to um, at the midway point. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. Yeah, it absolutely does. And, and to follow up with that, I think that uh, what Dr. Kramer had said earlier, you know. Uh, getting the career development piece in there and that get that focus early, um, I think it's going to tend to assist our students in, engage, in, in securing that engagement and, and building those strengths and the technology skills. Um, and as an instructor, I can certainly see the difference that it makes in, in our students' technological skills from the beginning. Um, to when they're in that second year of the program. Um, so one more thing, and this basically is concerning the research. Um, did you get a clear picture of whether the students felt that it was better to learn the e-portfolio earlier because it would link that academic achievement and their career goals? Or did you feel like, personally, it was a uh, better to have it earlier so that they would now have this warehouse. 
I think according to the research, um, this, uh, the students uh, felt that having more time to work on it would absolutely increase their, their comprehension and make those connections and be able to be more reflective with their e-portfolio and professional development. And also, unfortunately, because of the IRB constraints, I was not able to um, complete that part of the, the research. Um, Kiana actually completed that um, independently. Um, so I can look in her, um, her research and, and kind of get answers to those questions. But I think just from the research I have, I think it's evident that um, having this uh, e-portfolio career development process starting sooner would definitely enhance uh, students' uh, comprehension, uh, understanding of student outcomes. I mean, all those questions were asked in the survey and um, also their uh, reflection on career, uh, career goals and professional development. Great. Thank you very much. That was such a great answer. Okay. Well, anybody else has any other uh, final comments? We have another presentation that's uh, lining up. We have another one at 9 o'clock, and that will complete our presentations tonight. Um, I just really am so tied into this this topic. I think it's so important, and um, more and more students seem to be focusing on career development, which is really a good thing. But I still haven't seen um, I just haven't seen a movement to make career development something that is um, as much in, as important in the forefront as it is at the end. I'd really like to see that shift in higher ed for sure. So, Christine, thank you very much for your hard work. Um, this really was a roller coaster. We were right up against the deadline. In fact, I still have to read your final copy <laughs> because we just run out of time. So I really commend you for sticking with it and keeping um, a cool head under the circumstances. IRB was, uh, you know, significantly delayed. And um, this is research. It's what I tell the students. That I tell them it's a roller coaster right from the get-go so they know what to expect. But um, thank you for your continued focus, and um, it was great to have Kiana as part of that team. I don't see that she's in the room anymore. But I um, want to wish you lots of luck. We're going to get that feedback to you in the next day or two, and um, consider taking this uh, to the next step. This is really a worthwhile topic, very timely. So on that note, I bid everyone um, a good evening, and um, thank you again for your participation. Thank you, Dr. Kramer, and thank you, Dr. Loomis, and Dr. Wanamaker, and Kiana. Thank you all very much for your participation and for your help in making this possible. Thank you, and good night.